so stress is stress. I've, I've talked about this ad nauseum on the, on, on, on the social medias. Um, that said, there's a little story about a lion and an antelope. A lion hunts the antelope. Physiologically, there's no difference between either animal. There is one difference though. The lion wants to be there. The antelope does not want to be there. The other very important part to this story is that regardless of the outcome of the lion and the antelope, the lion hunting that antelope, if the antelope gets away, both animals downregulate and become parasympathetic very shortly after. If the lion catches the antelope, the lion goes into parasympathetic state and the antelope goes away. The, the, the other idea here is that we, from the body down, can't recognize really the differences between the stressors that's going on. So sympathetic state is sympathetic state, right? But the head knows, I know the difference between work and working out or playing, right? And all of those factors can have stress involved in them, especially when I'm not really enjoying or wanting to be in the process of work or maybe at home with the kids or maybe even uh, working out. Like it's, it's hard for me to go work out and I don't really want to be there. Well, you're not only going to put yourself into some physical stress, but then the mental stress of not wanting to be there and forcing yourself there becomes a very big problem. So, one of the easiest things you can do is figure out what it is you enjoy about what it is you actually do. Whether it's work or working out or playing, it doesn't matter. Stick to that and create a habit out of it. It might take three or four weeks, but sticking to things that make you happy about what you're doing while involved in a stressful situation allow us to downregulate or get into a parasympathetic state very quickly. Think of it like this. If I go to work all day and I, it becomes very stressful and I become, uh, you know, very um, stressed about maybe a couple things that happened that day and I didn't and I don't finish them, those tasks. And then I go home and I work out and I then start to think about work after I'm done working out, but I'm home and I need to eat dinner and then I need to get the kids ready for bed and then I need to go to bed, right? Because there's another day. But because I'm continuing to think about the things that I didn't accomplish at work, I'm now keeping my body in a very stressful situation. And the fact of the matter is, is this goes right back to what animals do very, very easily, even in life-threatening situations, is when they're over, they shut it off and it's over. Animals also deal with things quite differently than, than we as humans do, although we're just as, mar just as much a part of nature as an animal is. We've just removed ourselves from the natural part, right? Where if an animal dies that's a part of the, you know, the, the, the club or the, you know, the pack, um, immediately sorrow is felt, but quite Soon, very very quickly afterwards, life goes on and life moves on. And I'm not suggesting that you can't mourn or, or deal with things like that. But the fact is, is that if we were to really start to take a look at these things and be in the moment for what things are, stress is absolutely manageable from any situation if we can let things go and stop living either in the past or living in the forward, which, you know, past is depression, the future is anxiety, I think that's a little Lao Tzu, uh, but regardless, is that's where stress comes in, when we're not in the moment. So if we can stay in the moment, stress is fine, and then let it go, and then allow yourself to get to the next chore, or the next play, or the next workout, so that we're not, we're, we're, our, our bodies learn how to regulate and downshift at the end of the day. My number one thing, for down regulation at the end of the day is to really set aside <laughs> the phone or the computer or the iPad or whatever. And when I want to go to bed, which typically happens around 8 or 8.30, I do a simple breathing routine uh, that, that's an apnea protocol, which just means I'm holding my breath, right? But it, it's on a one, four, two split. You know, one being the inhale. So I inhale on a one, let's just say that's five seconds. 
right? And maybe that was three, but let's pretend that was five. I then hold my breath for 20 seconds. So five times four is 20 seconds. Then I would let my breath go after 20 seconds for 10 seconds because it's two times the one, right? And I would repeat that pattern for about five or 10 minutes and you will really notice your heart rate and your body start to really downshift and just let things go. And this is easily something that's uh, employed after A, work, B, putting the kids to bed, C, uh, after working out, you could even do it. And your body, you can really trick your body into really just down regulating and dropping everything and going back into this very calm state so the body can do what it's supposed to do, which is recover.